from Dr. James's apology or defence of Wycliffe. This controversy about the supremacy or primacy of the Pope being the very soul and life of popery may be resolved into sundry questions. 1. Whether the Pope be supreme judge upon earth in all causes and over all persons. 2. Admit he were so, whether he may intermeddle with the affairs of kings and princes. 3. Supposing that also, whether he be of that temper and making that he cannot err in his final conclusions. 4. And lastly, whether he be Antichrist or no. 1. Wycliffe, supposing the donation of Constantine, which afterwards was proved a counterfeit, for a while held that the Pope was to be consulted in the greatest points of religion, that he had a plenary and full power of himself, and that he did incur the crime of paganism who did not obey his mandates. But what of all this? Was Wycliffe a papist? No, verily, for, first, this plenary power was built upon a rotten foundation which afterwards fell to the ground of itself. Two, it was given to the Pope only for to edify, not to destroy or demolish the Church. Three, it was so limited that he could do nothing against the law of God or against the law of reason. Lastly, if his laws did go contrary to Christ's laws, an inferior might, and in conscience ought, not only to disobey him, but to reprove, correct, and contradict him, as Paul did withstand Peter unto the face. Further, he grants the Pope no greater authority or superiority over his brethren than Peter and Apollos had over their new converts, whom he excludes flatly from any such sovereignty, taking away all honour from them, and giving it to Christ Jesus, to whom all knowledge, all love, all duty, from all Christians is to be ascribed, so far that no creature is to be acknowledged, loved, or honoured, but Christ, or in respect of Christ. Neither is it possible, as he thinks, for any Catholic to be so unadvised or inconsiderate as to follow the Pope's fiat, let it be done, when he that spake, and it was done, shall say, No. For this verse can be true of no earthly man, but of our blessed Saviour Christ Jesus, this is my will, this I command. My will, for reason good, shall stand. Finally, he was condemned as an heretic for denying the Pope's supremacy, therefore he cannot well be accounted of the Romish Church. 2. The Pope's civil dominion or right in temporal estates. This question Wycliffe doth everywhere determine against the Pope, for the king and his regality and that of set purpose in an especial treatise of civil dominion, strengthening his opinion plainly out of the fundamental laws of this land with great judgment and knowledge. 3. That the Pope may err is shown plainly throughout all Wycliffe's works, where he proves that the Pope is of that nature that he may err, that one whom men call Pope may err, not only in manner and conversation of life, but also in doctrine and articles of the creed. He may sin, and no man in the world easier or more grievously, and indeed they have erred and been infected with foul heresies. Yea, he thinketh it to be likely that all bishops of Rome for three hundred years and more before his time were fully heretics. 4. Whether the Pope be Antichrist this Wycliffe proves by comparing his doctrine and manners with Christ's, chiefly in his book of the seven deadly sins, telling us that, forasmuch as through his decrees God's commands, by his commandments Christ's commandments, by his decretals Paul's epistles, by his canon law the canonical scripture, was vilified, nullified, utterly defaced and debased, a fault for which he is bold to tax him in sundry passages of his work, he pronounces of him absolutely that he is potissimus antichristus, most especially antichrist. The quotations are from Wycliffe's writings. Wycliffe's Opinion of the Papacy by John Wycliffe This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.